Hey, good morning. Coach Noreen with Voices of the Erased. Let me take a look at our parental alienation daily paper for today. We got some interesting headlines. I'm going to take a look at this article right here. Letting go when alienated parents give up. Let's take a look at what we have here. This one's posted on pathogenicparentingsite.wordpress.com. This one has a date of July 15th, 2016. I chose this one because it gives a clear message of what target parents go through. And it gives a little bit of helpful advice. And really, it's this, this graphic. No, I cannot explain to you what parental alienation feels like. And it's just somebody laying in a puddle of unending tears. So what does it mean when they're giving up? And giving up doesn't mean that we don't love our kids. Giving up means it's time to move out from the past and it's part of the grieving process in which we'll see. When a parent endures PA, various emotions materialize. Some are angry, others are helpless. On the other hand, a number of rejected parents evolve into dedicated, empowered advocates, but just as many are depleted both physically and financially, some parents may ask, when do I let go? And letting go, again, it's not about not loving your kids. It's about understanding the reality of the situation and the truth. Look, the harder rejected parents fight, especially when you're on the further end of the spectrum of being erased, it's the kids who suffer even more. So the letting go is about survival but it's also about calming down the hell that's been unleashed on our children by the pathogenic parent and family members and friends that they've recruited for their sick game. So alienated parents, also known as rejected parents, are grieving. Dr. Gardner in 2002 wrote, for some alienated parents, the continuous heartache is similar to living death. Sadly, for many rejected parents, the sorrow never ends. It's ambiguous grief. You're mourning the death of your children, yet they're still walking on this earth. Okay, you're familiar with Elizabeth Kubler-Ross's five stage of grievings, yes? First, you have denial. Denial is not understanding what the reality is, folks. Gardner said denying reality is a, obviously a maladaptive way of dealing with a situation. In fact, denial is generally considered to be one of the defense mechanisms that are inappropriate, maladaptive, and pathological. Obviously, it's hard to deny that one is a rejected parent. However, at times, it's easier to deny the situation is not real. I, I know going through this, when you think about that there was a time that you and your spouse, you, you got married, you had children, you parented together. Some longer, there were some that were shorter. And like overnight, you're like, this can't be happening. I don't understand how this person that we were married or we had children together, we chose to, is, is doing this to the kids. Like, we're, we're partners for the children. Wait, what? This can't be happening. I don't understand. And then you don't understand. The deal with the unreal some parents may resign. Studies indicate that some rejected parents, like survivors of domestic violence, become passive. Because you're standing there looking at this and it's happening, but you just can't wrap your head around it because it 
just doesn't make any sense. Then you get anger, but ha underlying anger is hurt and a loss of power and a loss of control over a situation or event. You are on this roller coaster, you're strapped in super tight and you don't even know where the hell you're going. It's out of control. Alienated parents become angry as their cases are dismissed, their cause is, mo is mocked, seeing how friends and families are recruited by this pathogen nutcase to continue the smear campaign. You're crazy. You never love the kids. These are consistent. And no matter what country, if it's mom, dad, the markers, the script, it's the exact same. Okay. Third, now you got bargaining, All right? A bargaining parent may believe if they try hard enough or say the right thing, hers or her, his or her child will suddenly have a change of heart. So part of this is, is telling the child the truth. But at this point, they're so enmeshed with the alienator that it ends up creating conflict between you and your child because your child now doesn't have the capacity to critically think. They're tightly enmeshed with the alienator they go back and report everything you say to the alienator and it's like you've laid out your cards and they're the cards of truth mind you but then the alienator tries to then take what you're saying and give it a spin to make you the bad guy it's really really a sick game folks for those who are listening to this and trying to support somebody or heard the topic curious about it, this is what happens. No wonder the target parents go through much, so much complex trauma. Then you get into depression, stages of grief. It is so much aligned to the alienation process. There's self-blame. What did I do wrong? What could I have done different? You're trying to carry the weight of the world. There's a hopelessness. This is never going to end and despair. And unfortunately, it's this point in time where target parents are most vulnerable. And these are where we see the suicides. And God bless our veterans who are hit quite hard with this. Uh, and I really do believe maybe one day somebody will do a study, but I, I really think a lot of the veteran suicides are connected to parental alienation. Fifth stage is acceptance. Okay, and acceptance doesn't mean joy. Acceptance means Oh, this is what it is. They may be forced to give up the fight. It's about choosing to let go loosely, meaning a day doesn't go by that I don't think about my kids. But I also know the harder I tried, the more I fought, the more I explained myself, it actually made it worse for my kids because he kept putting them in such a horrible spot and they, they're functioning, they're checking boxes off. But if you look in their eyes, in any of our children's eyes, they're not the same. There's such sorrow. And these, <laughs> These pathogens, because they don't have empathy, it doesn't matter. The ends justify the means. It's all about power control and destruction at no matter what the cost is or who the cost is. 
the children that they birth as well. Okay. It is vital to consider what letting go signifies. Letting go is not to cut oneself off. It's just understanding that you can't control anybody. You can't control the situation. You can't control or manipulate a change in the storyline. You understand that the only person, the only thing you can control is yourself. It is only yourself. As applied to PA, one cannot force somebody to stop acting like a jerk, can't stop the smear campaign, can't stop trying to sue you every turn of the every turn of the day of the calendar day you know what they need to get over themselves it's just you get to the point like this it's just like oh here we go again there is another letter it's disgusting they're stalkers yeah and for the ones that are the trolls stalking me that are the alienators are doing the bidding yeah i know and folks the other targets you know too we're being stalked all the time all right i digress secondly letting go letting go is not denying but accepting where you are it's the reality of it acceptance is realizing that some exes they refuse to co-parent. When you're dealing with a personality disordered person, refusing to co-parent, folks, they don't have the capacity because when your personality disordered, they look through the world of there's a winner and a loser, period, end of story. There's no teamwork, there's no collaboration. It's me or not me. Is their point of view. Some alienating parents inform or intend to turn the child against the other parent permanently. They stop at nothing. One study depicts this unfortunate but true reality. A minority of parents who suffer from personality and mental disorders may ignore the court and spend their waking hours finding ways to exhaust the other parent emotionally and financially. Yes, you may realize that you or a loved one are in the minority. Yeah, welcome, welcome to my world. And I know I have such a great circle of healing and support because I know I'm not the only one. There's others that were married to someone who has been obsessed with trying to destroy us but we're not going down. Parents may also have to accept that they may be blamed for the rejection, blamed not only by family and friends, but by society. No one likes to point fingers these days, after all. It is socially unacceptable. As noted by Warshak, attributing a parent-child problem to both parents when one parent is clearly more responsible for destructive behavior is a misguided effort to appear balanced and avoid blame. Personality disordered folks are the uh, chronic victim, always the victim. Red flag, boys and girls, red flag. You're letting go really is understanding that you can only control you. And this decision is very personable and uh, personal. And this book right here, Divorce Poison, I used to say, Oh, geez, it's like the kids joined a cult. And I stumbled upon Dr. Warshak one day, looked at it, read maybe three sentences, and I said, holy smokes, there's a name for this thing. Well, Divorce Poison was where my sky opened up. And go to voicesofthrace.com. He's got books. I also have some other books there on the bookshelf for you to check out that have been instrumental in not only understanding what this is, but the, the healing process. 
He has seven suggestions of the possibility of letting go. One suggestion is when all legal channels and uh, is when all legal channels to improve the situation have been exhausted. And it's so challenging to get um, validation through the court and to get things to turn around through the court uh, because it's a huge system and uh, an incredible game. Check out nationalparentsorganization.org. They have been doing some great work and they are addressing this state by state in the courts. Right. A second suggestion by Warshak is when your ex is so disturbed that a continuing battle could provoke him or her to violent action against the children or against you or other members of your family. Um, and clearly not everybody has the funds to have the battle in court. Um, and you, you got to look at other places besides court to get validation and the survival. Honestly, it has a lot to do with faith and hope and prayer. Finally, through all of my talking today, let's take a look at this last paragraph. As a conclusion, should you come into contact with a rejected parent, it may be helpful to offer grace for his or her grief. Each and every rejected parent differs in his or her stage of sorrow. They will also display unique feelings. Some may feel discouraged, dejected, depressed or others may be angry and outraged. If the parent recently read about PA and discovered there's a name, they may feel relieved. Perhaps they're baffled, broken, bewildered. If they've pleaded with the courts for 15 years, they may be helpless, they may be guarded. When their families blame them, they may become withdrawn and detached. Regardless of the stage that accompany the pain of PA, Rejected parents require empathy, exaltation, and esteem. Folks, if you are a target parent and you're stuck in that anger, if you're stuck in feeling that there's this huge need to be validated, pause, breathe, look at these resources, and turn to prayer. I love you all. Have a good, beautiful, amazing day. Until next time.